personal finance practice problem using Excel. Debentures that are callable price calculation. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank, example, in essence, answer key. Let's look at it now. We've got a debenture type of bond. We're gonna be calculating the price on it as per usual, but this time added wrinkle, added problem, added issue. It's callable, it has a callable component to it. What does that mean? That means that the corporation or issuer of the bond, typically a corporation oftentimes, has the capacity to call the bond at that amount. What's that going to do to the bond price when we're thinking about the market price or us on the investment side of things? The market price is generally going to basically be capped at that callable amount because you would assume that we're not going to be paying more than the callable amount if the bond could be called at that amount. So it's kind of acting as a ceiling. The second tab here, the practice tab, uh, having pre-formatted cells on the right so you can work the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The third tab just has the information on the left. If you only have a blank sheet, you can just lay down your baseline formatting and add the data on the left. I would do that by hitting the triangle, right-clicking the selected area, format the cells. I'll typically be choosing the currency brackets and then no dollar sign, no decibel. I'm not going to hit OK because I already have this. I'm just going to X out of it. Then add your data on the left, adjusting cells as necessary, such as the percentages, make a skinny C column, and we're good to go. So we got the debentures. We got the face amount, $1,000. We got the coupon rate, which is the 14%, the yield to maturity, or in essence, market rate, the rate that's not on the bond determined by the market for kind of related bonds, we would assume 8%, due uh, in years 15, but it's callable at the 1,410 and they are semi-annual bonds. So basically that callable feature, we can think about it as saying, okay, well, that's gonna have an impact when we do a comparison. We're gonna try to compare to relatable bonds and judge what we think the rate would be. But then we got that kind of ceiling that we would expect to be having in terms of we're not gonna be paying more than the callable amount because the corporation can call it back at that amount. So we just do our normal kind of price calculation then and then and then apply the ceiling concept. So we're going to say the price. Let's go ahead and make that black and white home tab font group black and white. We'll do our normal bond calculation, which is going to be the present value of interest and the present value of the face amount at maturity at maturity. Let's make this a little bit wider and we've done this before. So I'll do it fairly quickly here. So we're going to say negative present value shift nine rate that we want. That's going to be the market rate or the yield to the maturity. That's the yearly yield, however, and these are semi annual. Therefore, I'm going to divide it by two and then I'm going to say comma. We got the number of periods. The number of periods is going to be 15 years, but we need semi-annual periods, six month periods, half year periods. So we're going to multiply it times two to get to 30, not divide, multiply, just multiply. That would get us back to the same spot times two. And so then comma, the payment amount would be the thousand dollar amount here times the coupon rate, but that's usually expressed in terms of a yearly rate. And we're going to get semi yearly payments. So we're going to divide that by two and enter and then we'll do the present value of the face amount bringing that uh, back to the current period present value shift nine the rate is going to be the eight percent once again the yield market rate we're going to divide it by two though because that's a yearly rate we need the semi yearly and then comma the number of periods we're going to say is 15 but once again we want to multiply that times two this time to get to 30 half year periods 36 month periods 30 uh, semi annual periods comma no payment this time because we're looking at not an annuity going to the future value that being the one thousand dollars and okay let's sum it up equals the s to the u to the m sum give me an s give me a u give me an m sum sum let's go that's not how you spell prime
Anyways, we're gonna make this black. We're gonna do our we're gonna do our formatting here. <clears throat> Home tab, font group, blue. If you don't have that blue right there, it's in the more colors. Give me some more. Co Let me see that color wheel. Let me see that color wheel standard. We're gonna go to that one right there. Okay, and then we're gonna go to the font group. Hit that drop down and put the all borders. Give me the borders on everything. Where do you want the border to go? I want it on everything. All the borders. Everything has a border. So basically then we're going to cap that price uh, price. Let's call this price before call. And then we're basically going to cap it right price after call. And we're going to say, well, if that comes out to something over this number, then we're going to cap it at that number in essence, because the, the company can call it back there. But if it's under that number, then we'll keep the price what it is. So we can use then kind of a logic function then if this number is greater than this number than that number right so we can do something like that i'm going to use a logic like this there might be an easier one to do but i'm going to say this equals if brackets if this number is greater than this number then that's a comma then what do you want it to do well then i want you to take the smaller number but comma, if it's not true, then I want you to take this number, meaning if that's smaller. So I think that'll work for our logic test. Might not be the cleanest or fastest way to do that, particularly because if they're close together, we could do a min calculation, just so you know. Like I could do it this way. I was thinking just for Excel formatting purposes, you could say, well, if that was the price before and this is the callable number, uh, hold on a second. This was the callable number and you were using fancy Excelness and you wanted it to do automatic calculations. You can put them on a side by side basis, one next to the other or on top, on top below basis. You can do it on a top below basis and then take the min of those two. So that's an easier function to use. So that's another option that you could uh, that you could opt for you can opt for that option if you want so just for excel formatting purposes that's why i'm showing you font group brackets put some underline put an underline right there we can say that this one we'll put here and then uh and so then if this amount the callable was less than let's test out our formulae if this was like 1200 then it would pick out the lesser the lesser of here and i've got to go over if this was like 16 call option then it picks this one it's working as it should as far as i can tell let's put an underline here now if you wanted to add like a text into your thing you might you might type out something like this and say here's my little blurb on why and it's all in one cell you know so then you can try to try to expand it to multiple cells. So you might you might try to like expand it out here, and you could uh, you can merge the cells, and then you might want to put it up on the top here, and then I'll left align it, and then we'll wrap the text. So that's one way that you can add basically the text to it. I don't always like doing that unless I have to, because now you got that big cell which kind of messes everything up but you will put it there for now so there's our little blurb if you wanted to say a blurb the call price will keep the nice. bonds from getting too much over that price investors will not generally buy the bonds at the market price when there's a risk they will be called away at the lower price is our explanation for uh the action taken